What's up friends? And welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we're doing another look from the newly released Natasha Denona Safari palette. Her all matte palette. By this time, I would already have liked to upload my second look after my first impressions video. Because I filmed that video before I uploaded my first impressions video, I didn't address a lot of the comments and observations you guys made under my first impressions video but since i read those last night i'm going to address them today i just want to say that because a lot of times it's all timing and it's not because i'm ignoring what you're saying or not taking anything you have to say into consideration i just like to film in advance so i have footage to edit and to roll out videos for you guys you know what i mean i just realized i don't have any earrings oh my god hold on without further ado let's roll into this tutorial if you want to take a look at how we use Use the more green shades day then please keep on watching base is already done and all products that I use today will be down below in the description box as well as timestamps because I know you guys love those but this is not really a timestamp necessary video I mean I'm gonna start soon and we're just gonna do the look that's it some things I did not mention in my first video that this is in fact limited edition I believe her tropic palette is also limited edition and concerning the magnetic palettes Tropic palette is also magnetic. It has the same design, I feel, as the Safari palette. I have one of her older palettes here, her big, big, big band palette. And you guys have mentioned that her all her palettes are, in fact, magnetic. I couldn't find my deep panning spatula. I have a little mini orange stick here. Now, this doesn't have holes behind it, but you could just carefully go in on the side. Just make sure you're very delicate with it. So you're going between the pan and the palette frame and it'll pop out like so. And the whole well is magnetic. Now, because of that design, they are tougher to depot. But I feel if you have, again, a little spatula or something like an orange stick just to dismantle them. That's a really powerful word. I didn't want to use that. To depot them. And I believe that's the case with her smaller palettes as well. I prepped my lids with P. Louise today. I'm going back. Oh, that's a deep crease. Because <laughs> I've been rotating between my Too Faced Born This Way Super Consult Super Coverage Concealer. And I feel like we could go back to P. Louise for a little bit. Let me just zoom you in a little closer. Okay, okay, okay. I'm very happy today because the lighting is better and I feel we don't look as gray. I wanted to come back on here and use the green shades because some of you had mentioned that they looked muddy, but we're gonna see. I didn't powder because again, I wanna see how these shadows perform on a slightly tackier base. I think today I'm gonna go in with Rhino. You know what, do I wanna do Savannah first? I'm gonna do Savannah first like I did in the first impressions video, going in with my Wayne number 16. And let's see how this goes. I'm gonna just get in there. I wanna pat it first. I feel like if I pat it first, I'll have a better application. Savannah has a lot of kickback in the pan, but I think it applies very smoothly on the lids. Patting it in first because I feel I could further blend this out with another shade. But even that application I feel is pretty good. It's going onto the skin well, and it doesn't look patchy. I feel, I mean, I get it if, if you're expecting an immaculate shadow. I'm a little more forgiving with olive shades because I think they're, I think they're tough. And Milk Cosmetics is restocking Gemini. We'll see how that goes. Based on how this is applying, it definitely looks a little more gray on camera than it does green in the pan. It definitely looks more olive in the pan. I'm not too sure why, but we're gonna keep pressing on, okay? I wanna use another blend out shade. I think I wanna go in, I'm still gonna go in with Tamarind because I think it's a really beautiful color and also ideal to blend out Savannah with. This is my Sigma E40 brush. I'm just brushing the edges to help smooth them out. I read, uh, Christine from Tatalia, her review on Natasha Denona, and she brought up an interesting point. She felt that Natasha could have stayed away from the tribe name and stick more to Flora Fauna, just, you know, 
the landscape, plants and flowers and the animals in Africa. She felt that Natasha was exoticizing these names and these tribes. Sometimes I definitely give people the benefit of the doubt way too often. And when I saw the names and we talked about what they meant and what they represented in the first video, my automatic thought was she's been to these places, she's been on safari, maybe she saw these groups of people and upon that observation as an artist, she thought of this color and she wanted to name that color as such. Could she be exoticizing and taking advantage of uh, the different people, the different tribes on the African continent from the different countries? Sure. I sometimes feel bad as a woman of color when I don't inherently pick these observations up. Like, I'm such a bad black person. It could be very well she is taking advantage of, of these tribe names and maybe these colors have nothing to do with them and why are you including them in your eyeshadow palette? Or maybe, again, she's been to these places and she felt the inspiration at the time and wanted to include them in the palette. And again, this is just a conversation. I don't want us to go haywire about it, but let me know if you notice that and what you feel about it. We're next going in with Wayne, number four, but in with Rhino. And Rhino, I'm gonna punch more to my outer V. Now, if we're just gonna talk eyeshadow performance, the way they melt into the skin, I feel is something that is very hard to come by in a matte shadow. Like I said in my second look video, I don't even have to swipe it in to lay down the color. I mean, it just goes on. The thing is though, sure, sometimes you'll take a flat shader brush first, lay down the color, and then you'll take a blender brush to smooth it out. When you just tap it in, it smooths out automatically. Now I feel that I applied Rhino that you can see Savannah's more olive nature. Taking my number four again with Savannah and just smoothing out the inner portion of my eye so I make that little rounder, not as like it comes to a complete stop, you know what I mean? The Tropic palette did go on sale for like a short stint. Feel it went on sale for a few days at Sephora. But I just felt like I wanted it, but maybe at the time, like I really couldn't spend the money and I couldn't really justify the purchase. Let me know if you have the Tropic palette. What do you think about it? It wasn't her best performing palette in terms of reviews. I don't think it got a lot of great reviews. Uh, Sunset palette for sure got the most. I think that is the most well-loved palette out of all the ones she's released. One of you had mentioned that you love the Star palette. I actually, I want to get that again. Again, I returned it but now I'm like I feel I didn't know makeup well it didn't have my Wayne Goss brushes and I feel like I want to take another stab at it I understand this is turning out very smoky already I want to go in with Fata Morgana I love this deep teal shade I'm wondering though if I should I don't know if I should continue with Fata Morgana if I should just because I also have my Nude Sticks pencil in the shade Army. It's like a really nice olive green. I probably should have applied that on my lid first if I wanted to stick to just Rhino and Savannah and call it a day. I'm gonna do Fata, forget it. You know what, I'm just gonna do it. Except though, I will now go in with a flat shader. This is my Smith 253 brush in with Fata Morgana. I'm gonna pat it first on my lid and just get the color on love love this teal blue i think it's so gorgeous and teal blues i feel are tough because it's an intense color but again i just love how her mattes melt into your skin and just melt in with the other mattes previously applied i think it looks absolutely gorgeous i got my number four on standby in with some Rhino and just smoothing out these edges. I also want to pull it out more. I think, I think we're ready to take it there. But I'm being very careful because I find with these deep teal olive shades, it could get out of hand very fast. Going in little by little and again using a very light pressure so it doesn't go out of hand. I think we're doing all right. I'm gonna stick with my number four, but I will go in now with Rhino 
to my lower lash line because I'm gonna smoke this out quite a bit. Wait, so can we talk about something? I did not know you can exchange your Sephora uh, reward points for a gift card. But here's a catch. There are several actually. Catch number one. I called to find out how can we make this transaction happen. You know what I mean? The gentleman said that every Tuesday and Thursday, those are the re uh, reward bazaar days on 9 a.m. Pacific time, they'll release the new rewards on their app, their website. I was looking for that option and I asked, where is it? He says on Tuesday and Thursday, Random emails would go out with the option to convert your points to a hundred dollar gift card and basically it's a Willy Wonka situation You don't know when you're gonna get it You just have to check your email every Tuesday and Thursday and find out if you were one of the chosen ones Which is also not true because when I looked on Rewards Bazaar yesterday I did see the option for the $100 gift card conversion. It said add to basket. I added to Not quite sure if that option shows up on random Tuesdays and Thursday, but I was thrilled and who knows what's really going on but make sure you check Rewards Bazaar so you can convert those points and get some money. Here's the other catch. Two catches. You have to spend it all at once. You can't spend it in pieces. You just have to do the $100 all online or all in store and you can't return the items that you bought on the gift card. So it's like you kind of have to decide whatever you want to splurge on because you're not and don't feel bad because it's not your money per se i mean it is it brought you to this place that you have to make sure you really love it because you can't return it what would i buy if i had that option if i'm able to savannah number four if i had a hundred sephora dollars what would i buy and not feel like i have to return in that case i feel like skincare that i love that i need to replenish i already went haywire during the Beauty Insider appreciation sale. So I've already stocked up on a lot of items that I use over and over again, like my makeup remover and my uh, makeup wipes. Like indulging makeup items. <sighs> Let's see. Maybe, you know, the one thing I do love about holiday releases is the jumbo size items that they'll start to sell for like a better value price i got a really big purity uh facial cleanser for my brushes the skincare sets that all come with minis like i really love those because i actually recycle and keep using the mini bottles for travel so i think that's an item i would use the three hundred dollars with i know this is getting smoky so fast i'm like realizing i still have to leave the house but you know what you really got it you got to commit so we're going all in i just wish this looked better i'm trying to really make this happen because i want it to be a smoother looking point now if you wanted to make this into a more daily friendly look then definitely don't do this i would go in with the warmer shades like maybe tamarind or desert date all over the lid and use Fato Morgana just on the lash line top and bottom or even just the top to change it up and make it a teal blue liner instead of just a black one. I was gonna go off camera and just do my other eye but you know what I'm gonna stay here with you guys. Crazy thing is with all the shadow we applied no fallout so that's pretty good. I see what happened here I definitely went too high with um the teal shade that's why it looks a little crazy but maybe when i have both eyes done i'll feel better about it thank you guys so much for your support you were so kind and just sharing in my enthusiasm of using my adsense money to buy this palette i believe yes you do have to let the ad run I'm not sure if you get more money if you click on the ad. I definitely have to look that up on a YouTube video, like how does AdSense work? I do watch a lot of like YouTube how-tos and how to build your channel. Believe it or not, the majority of money made is not through views. It's through affiliation codes and sponsorships. Now, I actually have a two sponsorship videos coming up, but they are with brands that I've already worked with 
and that I genuinely love and I've actually recommended you in the past. So I do believe it's a, it's a two-way street, right? If a brand were to approach me with a sponsorship uh, gig, I would ideally like to test the product out first and if I feel it's something that I love and I feel comfortable recommending to you guys, then I'll go on with the project. But just to kind of off the bat say, hey, this is great, you'll love it. I'm like, will I? I don't know. I gotta try it out first. I don't know how much wasn't recording. I don't even know what got, ah, that always happens to me. As someone, again, who's not on a salary, who is independent and every opportunity is a gig, you gotta take it or else you're not, you can't pay your bills. I feel it's my part to partner with the brand that I believe in and that I ideally have already used. I feel I purchased a lot of makeup and hair products and if a brand who I've been using for years wanted to work with me, partner up, to create content, I'll be thrilled. But further thrilled that I could actually share with you guys why I love the product so much and why I always heavily recommend it. This eye definitely turned out better than this eye. I feel I need to, like there's this urgency to take some loose powder and I feel like I wanna just buff down some of that shadow. I don't know if I'll be able to do it though. See, that's the problem. This is my Ray Ray BH Cosmetics small tapered brush. Did that work a little bit? It's probably like my lid as well. Let's see, I'm gonna take another, oh, my poor Sigma just fell. I'm in a very awkward position and I'm not able to rescue her. That's the only reason why I'm picking up this brush. This is a Morphe E27. I feel like I just need to buff down some of that shadow so it could match up with my other eye better. I feel that's a little better, but I definitely love how this one turned out better than this one. That usually happens. This is my, you know, rehearsal eye. She doesn't go on stage ever. I'm in the fitness industry and I love to teach. I love to teach people movement. I love to help them through plateaus they're running into in terms of flexibility and skill. As you know from my Instagram, I do a lot of contortion and hand balancing. And that basically took over as my, my form of fitness for my body. And I find it so encouraging when you teach your body different skills that you wouldn't think possible. And it can do all these amazing things. I also teach uh, a dancer conditioning class that I feel helps with people's balance, endurance, and strength. And also, if they are undergoing any injuries, I feel they could really use it as physical therapy to kind of continue becoming strong but not compromising their body in a harmful way. That's what I'm passionate about and I definitely would love to make my the majority of my money from that. I want to travel more and do uh, workshops and different classes across the US and also internationally. It is a physically demanding job and I just needed another source of income that's passive that can just help me uh, finance travels and booking and all those things. Because if, you know, goodness forbid, I did get hurt and I wouldn't be able to use my body to make money, then I have something else to help me do that. I'm gonna just continue doing my little get ready with me's and just create different looks with palettes that I already have. One, it works out with my schedule. I get chatty, as you know, and I love talking about makeup. I really do, and I feel you guys, like, understand. I just love that I have a community now that we could just, you know, relax, talk about makeup extensively, very in-depth, and just have fun and just relax. Oh, I feel a lot better about this now. This, she was making me worried. Definitely, you guys, if you need to kind of fix your shadow mistakes, loose powder on a fluffy blending brush will help you make it happen. I'm taking tamarind on my Morphe again and grazing the edges that we buffed out with the loose powder just to bring some color back in because it took it away, which was the point, but I also wanted to 
match up with this eye that has a little more tamarind on the top. And you know me, I love a blown out lower lash line and I'm just continuing to add if I could. I have so many brushes in my hands, you guys. I don't know what's happening. Where to go? I don't know where, I lost it. <sighs> I'm going in with Savannah, my number four. And I'm taking this low because I almost want to look, you know, dead. But not too dead. Just a pretty smoky type of dead. I also observed that Savannah definitely turns up more olive when you pair it with the other shades in here. So it's like when you apply it on its own, it looks gray. But then when you apply it with the other shades, it appears more olive, I guess, because of it has something to to do that on all right what shall we do for the inner corner i'm definitely going to go in with stone stone i feel is gorgeous and i think is going to pair beautifully with this eye look now in terms of what to use i'm going to go in with I'm actually going to go in again with my smith 253 brush take stone on that and pat it onto the inner corner and I think that's so pretty I think it gives a really beautiful brightening effect but it stays within the color story that we have on the eyes and I'm definitely getting a little bit of blue from this color it looks like it's going to apply like a very light pastel mint green and maybe that's what it is but on camera it doesn't just look white or doesn't just look gray there is a color to it and i think it's gorgeous all right let's apply some mascara one of you suggested to combine this with mothership five Ooh, can you imagine extreme aubergine with maasai let me know if you want to see that yeah i love this mascara this was not happening yesterday with the hourglass i'm sorry i think it just lifts up my lashes well and it keeps them like this all day i will now apply my Givenchy highlighter stupid impulse buy i just think this is a beautiful formula oh my god it's outrageously beautiful i'm just taking my ray ray brush that still has some loose powder on it and i'm buffing that into the skin taking my ooh, that was a lot of spritz Taking my beauty sponge and just pressing that layer of moisture into the skin. Taking my Ofra Liquid Lip in Verona. I've been loving wearing this. Placing some NYX Cosmetics Soft Matte Cream London Center. Finishing off with my MAC Extended Play on my lower lash line. And here's the finished look. How do you like it? Let me know down below what you want to see next from me using the Safari palette or any palette for that matter. And with that said, it's a wrap. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this video helped. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And until then, I'll see you on here again with another demo, tutorial, chit chat, get ready with me or review. Take care and I'll see you again soon.